Brad Pitt stands close, holding a fat <laughs> for me. He knows that's the only reason I'm here. I knew he'd have that fire. That's all he's good for. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Basic Broadcasting Corporation. I'm Bim Adiwune. And I'm Nicole Perkins. And you're listening to First, First Aid Kit. Kit. Today we're going to be talking about the basics. Yes. And the basics, they look good. We recognize that they're attractive people. Objectively speaking, yes. Right. Um, but some things doesn't curl all the way over. It's just kind of like, yeah, you're cute. People like Army Hammer, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, Jennifer Lawrence, Matt McGorry, George Clooney, and dare I say, even Denzel Washington. Yeah, I mean, uh, people are attractive. Right. But these people are kind of not quite our thing. Right, and that's okay. You know, right. you know, we're we're not here to yuck anybody's yum. Like there's a lid for every pot. But we did invite someone here today who does see it for the basics, who can kind of tell us, you know, maybe she'll sell us on the basics and get us to change our mind about them. And that is writer Bolu Babalola. Her view of basics is a little different from ours, but still on point. And after we talk to Bolu, we're going to get into a subcategory of basics, <laughs> the evolved basics, if you will, mm. called the you thoughts. Yes, yes. That's such a specific and academic term. So I'm very proud that you've uh, <laughs> reached back into your scholarly learnings and brought that forth. Thank you so much. And <laughs> as always, we have drabbles for you this week. Mm, so many good drabbles. OK, let's get into it. Hi, Bolu. Hi. Hi! <laughs> Balu is a writer and she's also a Nigerian British princess. So I am like <laughs> incredibly proud we to be here. even. <laughs> <laughs> to be even tangentially uh, connected to you as a fellow Yoruba person. So this is great. This is great. So we've got you on the line for a very specific, very, very specific uh, <laughs> ask today. It feels to me like a lesser person might be offended to be asked to come on to talk about <laughs> <laughs> to talk about today's topic. But I feel very strongly based on your Twitter feed that like me and Nicole, you are a thirsty person. Thirsty in a good I way. Am. I am. Yeah, in a good way. In a... I'm thirsty but fashion. I'm yeah. thirsty but fashion, you know, like. Thirsty but make it fashion. fashion. <laughs> Shout out to Tyra. Exactly. <laughs> so, but but it seems to me, uh, based on conversations that you and I have had via the DMs, which are always mm -hmm. popping, mm -hmm. that <laughs> sometimes your tastes, self-admittedly, run a little basic. I mean, <laughs> yes, they are. I, I I can't even I can't even lie. I can't run. My tastes are basic, but <laughs> again, basic but fashion <laughs> is basic with taste. Bolu, can you tell us what makes someone basic? Like, what's the definition of basic that you have that you tend to run with? I just feel like it's you know a kind of corny, very earnest, um, just without any like they're just not self aware at all. So. Um, Drake, for instance, is a very basic, it's a very basic um, MCM because, <laughs> you know, uh, it's just like everything is very contrived to get the woman. Like it's very kind of, he knows what he's doing, but also he doesn't know what he's doing. Like it's, I don't know, it's just a very kind of, he doesn't put any thought into it, but then he does put thought into it. I don't even know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. He's basically <laughs> trying very yeah. hard to appear like he's not trying hard, but he's trying very hard while doing so. Yeah, it's just it's very basic. But then I can't really say much because, you know, I have a crush on Drake. So <laughs> it was it started off ironic and then it just over the years just solidified as something very real uh, to me. I understand. That. Been there, been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it that kind of led to that? Was that like his lyrics or was it like his personality? It was the summer of 2016 when he got thick. Oh. <laughs> it was when he started posting gym. <laughs> it was when he was posting gym selfies. I'm not even going to pretend that it was some kind of like inner spiritual thing. It was him getting thick. It was his arms. And the beard, obviously. <laughs> and the beard. The beard goes. The beard goes. Um, so listen. <laughs> exactly. 
I have made a my t- heart goes crap. <laughs> he makes it so obvious because he knows exactly what he's doing. But this is it, and that to me, that that to me is like the epitome of Drake corniness. Because I was just like, it we is. get it. You live in the gym now. That's mm-hmm. really great. I'm so happy I for know. you. Do I need to see your sweat soaked like torso? Not necessarily. <laughs> it's nine a.m. Guys, I'm rebranding as a heartthrob now. Let's go back to Drake's lyrics. Is there a uh, is there a high point okay. of like yes. the corniest lyric that Drake has ever dropped? Oh, I don't know. There's just so many. Like, there was one lyric, I can't remember what song it was, but it was basically like, girl, like, I'll drive you to the, <laughs> I'll drive you to your law exams in the snow. And I yes. was like, yeah, of, of course you will. Like, you're, <laughs> of course you'll drive me to the, my bar exams. Like, you won't even ask for, like, gas money. You won't ask, you just, you'll just do it. Like, what's that song with, oh, yeah, I'm with Rihanna, where I'm too good for you. Like, oh, yes. Um, Dre. <laughs> Like that is the good, isn't that the good guy lyric? Like, I am just, I'm just too nice to you. Like, I'm just too good. Like, that is my thing. So how dare you have a problem with me because I am a nice guy? Yeah. And I hope you can take it. I hope you can take it all. I'm too good to you. I'm way too good to you. You take my love for granted. I don't know. I still, I, I, I understand it. I might let him smell it a little bit, but I wouldn't like. I wouldn't let Drake be <laughs> smell it. Yeah, I don't know. Drake is. I wow. said, yeah, that's I understand horribly vis- that. That's horrible. That's horribly visual. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I let Drake. I'd invite Drake to farm like a family barbecue, but he'd be like my lucky. So I'd send him to get fix up plates for me and my girls. Like right. I'll smack his butt as he go and gets my food. Like I feel like Drake yeah. is the guy you call when you're out with your girls and you need somebody to just kind of like Exactly. You know, buy right. buy the drinks and also you ward off drinks. ward off the other like Desi- <laughs> butt guys that are coming Drake, around. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Designated driver as well. He's gonna be our Uber driver for free. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Poor Aubrey. Um, so are there are there other examples of men who are basic, but you still fancy that you still kind of are like, oh, oh yes. Yeah. Coffee Cerebro is like at the top of my list. Oh, my God. He writes like Instagram. He's such a beautiful man, but he also kind of, he writes Instagram poetry. Like, I really hope he doesn't listen to this because um, I fully intend on marrying him one day. <laughs> but like, he writes this really corny <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm really, like, dead serious. But he, he writes this really corny Instagram poetry. Like, he really loves black women. Like, almost performatively so. But I, I kind of just, like, lap it up because I just love it so much because it's so rare. Right. So, uh, like, every single woman is his, like, kind of his, his, his chocolate queen. I've seen him use the chocolate emoji once or twice. <laughs> Did you guys see his angle on Girls Trip, though? Yes, that particular angle was yeah. That was, was a great stopping. angle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So the angle, um, dear listeners, that we're talking about um, <laughs> is like this scene where Jada Pinkett's character, everybody's tripping on um, absinthe, and she sees his image in a club, and he is naked, ex- and, yeah, it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a whole great. Lot. It's great. I got I yelled in the me cinema. Me too. Me too. I went to see it with my friend and I yeah, I made a sound, like a really loud, and I wasn't the only one. There were yeah. all these women in the cinema like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Bolu, I'm about to um, do something <laughs> that feels incredibly intimate. Um, I'm not trying to take the place of your basic bay. But I'm going to read a poem that he posted onto his Instagram back in May okay, of this year. Okay, you're going to serenade me with his I am ooh, going with to, his own words. I'm going to serenade you with the words of your beloved, your ideally betrothed. Um, so th- <laughs> betrothed. <laughs> ideally betrothed. <laughs> so there's a photo of a little black boy with a, uh, a violin at his, at his chin mm. and he's playing. And, and, and Kofi's written Cute. some words. He says, on nights like these... Sleep deems insufficient to my human voids. Ooh. <laughs> the moon seems distant <laughs> and isolated, like the me I used to love. I can only imagine where that little boy hides now. On nights like these, I project brown skin on pedestaled, sustained <sighs> by my lust. I mean, love. I love you, not you but the you I thought you were. The same you that looked like her, but wasn't. Mm. I'm a hypocrite wow. by nature. 
And by nature, I mean by God. <laughs> so, wait, <laughs> what? sorry, sorry, wait. No. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, no. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no, but like, literally, guys, can you imagine our vows? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, obviously, because it's like, okay, yeah, he's, you know, in lust and love, but he also is addressing systematic racism in the same thing. Like, he's just like so nuanced. Guys. Wow. And let me just say, like, as a, as a poet myself, this is not about dogging <laughs> poets and poetries, but no. this kind of goes back to what Bolu was saying earlier, the over earnestness, the, over, the, the trying too hard yeah. kind of stuff. That's like mm. the intentions are sweet yeah. and, and the intentions are good. Yeah. But oh lord, don't let me be misunderstood. But. Yeah, there's just a lot going <laughs> on but. here. So there's He's trying that's so hard <laughs> to pack everything in into that little Instagram poem. I absolutely, I adore it. Like, go ahead, it's so corny. I know half of it's performative because, like, that is his brand now, but I don't right. care. Right. Like, he's always tweeting at Issa Rae, like, um, my wife, my love, yeah, my sweetie, bae. Yeah. That <laughs> when are we going to do this? Really, really hurts my feelings. <laughs> I'm going to have to write my own lemonade about that. <laughs> uh, I want to move on to someone else who seems to make women just lose their shit. Women just die for this guy. And I don't quite get it for a few reasons. Uh, yeah, it's Idris Elba. I simply can't fancy Idris Elba because he reminds me yeah. of so many of my uncles. I can't fancy him. This is it. <laughs> this is it. And so many West African girls feel this way. Like, I used to fancy him. And then after a while, he just as he got older, I think, I just be like, mm, no, it's a bit gross. Right. I don't know. <laughs> like, he's handsome. Yes. Objectively, but, I can see that. You know. Like, he, he has, he possesses this beautiful face. You know, kind of like a rough hewn, not too skinny, not too whatever body. Yeah. It's nice. Like the whole package exactly. is lovely. But there is a strong whiff of just camembert, like pure Nigerian just... <laughs> uncle. Like he is just the cheesiest man in the world. I, exactly. I can imagine him just holding a bottle of super malt at like a family barbecue or whatever, yes. like talking with my dad. <laughs> like I just can't do it. For me, what um, what killed the Idris Elba crush for me, because I think he's a very handsome, very sexy man, but he has this song. Um, it's called Private Garden, and it is like... Oh, this, wait, I've seen that. But yeah, it's called Private Garden, and it's a really cheesy, corny kind of R&B yeah. you know, thing where they're like on a beach or a private island or something where Idris and the uh, yeah. his love interest. I don't know, it's just... I'm gonna play a little bit of it. Show me what you're running from, girl. It might take time for you to trust me. Trust me. Let your guard down. Let this brother enter your private garden. Yeah. <laughs> um. I think I blocked it out of my memory. As well you should have, because it's a terrible thing <laughs> to kind of unleash onto the world. He's also like a DJ, and I just, I don't know, it just doesn't help things for me. Just the fact that he's like kind of just this aging DJ that's yes. just kind of like and he's, trying to be down with the, the kids. Yeah, and his DJ name is Big Driss. Yeah. And all of it together no, is stop. just like... <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't like when I say Big Driss? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's just it's it's a lot. It's it's a whole lot. Um, let's let's move our gaze a little bit to the paler end mm -hmm. of, the, of the spectrum. Um, for okay. me, <laughs> I have quite a few cheesy white dudes that I'm just kind of like, nope, 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 mm. and nope again. We've mentioned Matt Magori. Yeah, God bless him, but I feel like he would make me want to punch him in the throat. You know, because you know what? It was for Matt Magori. Like, I actually remember the, the exact moment that I actually, my gaze turned to Matt McGorry. It was in How to Get With My Murder when he started dating... Um, Aisha Naomi King. Yes, yes. She, like, he started dating her character and they were, like, getting it on in the bathroom and he turned around and just kind of looked at her butt. Uh. <laughs> and they made, like, a pouty thing with his, with his face. What? And that should have made me, that should have made me, like, want to vomit, but it did not. <laughs> and I was like, oh... <laughs> Okay. Wow. This feels like sure, therapy. Okay, wow. You are revealing some things. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That yeah, is that just is have to get that off my chest. Yeah, I mean listen, live your truth. Stand in the sun, mate. Do you. But I thank remember so just much. looking at him and just thinking, God, you would annoy me so much because you would want to talk to me about 
like Biafra and you would want to kind of <laughs> oh quiz me yeah. on kind of like, you know, the, the struggles of the Ogoni people in the Niger Delta. And I'd be like, yeah. do you know what, Matt? I care about that. Were, yeah. But I don't want to talk about that shit with you. Like, mm-hmm. no, not every day you be involved. I just, he's so... There'll be, yeah. <sighs> There'll be no day off. No day off, right. And I'm just like, sometimes a girl just wants no. to just, you know... Watch some Netflix, bro. Like, not every day. Yeah. Fake deep. Co- anyway, that's. Yeah. This, I feel like I'm revealing also too much here. Um, <laughs> Nicole. Yeah. Who do you find? I know. I know who this is, but I know you find someone so ag- aggressively basic. I mean, it's just <laughs> I feel pain by how basic he is, and this is actually maybe controversial because I seem to be the only person that feels this way. But my fucking Brad Pitt. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> I find Brad Pitt to be one of the most basic men who, you know, just for whatever reason, exploded on the scene. And it's been I've been subjective to his basicness for the past, what, 25, 30 years. I don't. Wow. It's been a long time. I'm so sorry for your pain. There have only been four times that I've ever thought that he was attractive and I was kind of like okay I see it that's four times in his whole career his whole career okay go on the first time (laughs) was uh Thelma Louise when he was the drifter I think his character's name was JD and he was with Thelma um Mm -hmm. Gina Davis yeah and that was hot it was hot and it was a really you know but I feel like the bulk of the hotness from that whole encounter came from Gina Davis well I mean yes because right. when I went back and looked at it, it was, you know, she was just really just taken with him yeah. and so enamored with him so quickly, of course, because he was yeah. new and exciting yeah. and whatever. Um, so there was that. And then this movie, this terrible movie, Meet Joe Black. I fucking love that movie. It's terrible. It's terrible, but I watch it every time <laughs> it comes on. All right, Same. So like, whatever. And so there's like this love scene where uh, his, you know, it's like his first time. He's an angel or something. No, he's he's he's, a, he's the angel he's, of death. He's the angel of death, and he's having sex for the first time. Okay. Yes. And he's inhabiting <laughs> a human body, and like when he um, slides in, shall we say? Oh my god! He does like he, his <laughs> face just goes like really soft and confused and amazed, and he does this lip <laughs> lip tremble. Oh. Like Brad. <laughs> Okay, because that felt really Wait, real. That was like, the moment. yeah, like it felt like he was really reliving his own first time. So that was that. And then um, Troy. Okay, so let's talk about Troy. Troy, because I meet Troy. I remember watching Troy and kind of going, "Oh, I get it. I get why people fancy Brad Pitt." That for me was like the first big mm-hmm. time where I was kind of like. Oh, he's actually quite hot because prior to that, nothing. Sahara, right. just nothing. Yeah. And then suddenly I was like, oh, I get it. Mm-hmm. And I don't even like mm-hmm. blondes like that. Yes. And see, maybe that's what it is for me. I b- Blonde and blue is so basic. So it's been forced down our throats for so long when <laughs> it comes to... That's what she said. I'm going to stop. I'm sorry. Don't do that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so it's just like I get, I get like automatic... I give automatic pushback to more blonde and blue being pretty and beautiful just because it's yeah. blonde hair and blue eyes. It's like, that's not enough for me. Yeah. And then my fourth and final thing that I recently discovered of maybe like a month or so ago is this old spread in W Magazine uh, 2005 with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And there's a picture of him in this kind of 1950s bowling alley shirt. And he's got it open so his whole chest and his torso and all that is displayed. And I was like, oh... Yeah, <laughs> I see it. Because I never, like, Fight Club, I didn't see that. I didn't finish watching it. I liked his body. I did, you know, and I understand that it sparked all this kind of lust in a lot of white guys as they started to, like, they wanted that. They wanted his body for yeah. their own, you know. Yeah. I get that. But, yeah, Brad Pitt is basic as fuck to me. I get that. And you know who I think is also very basic is uh, he's the guy from The Fall um, and Fifty Shades of Grey. And that's yes. <laughs> Jamie Dornan. <laughs> Um, I want to. Oh, yeah. I want to. I want to like actually <laughs> formally protest his casting. I never read the books. I've never seen the films. I have no desire to either the books or the film. But I remember thinking to myself, him when they announced him as Christian Grey, and I was, I just was like, so upset. <laughs> Are you a fan of the books? I'm not a fan of the books, but mm. I expected that the. Well, I read one book. I, uh-huh. Oh, I was just so bad. But I, yeah, I, I got through one book and I was like, okay, let me just see what the film's saying. And I was just so disappointed. Like, ha- 
like it just made everything in me like invert. There was nothing yeah. sexy. sexy. So, I'm glad you said invert. <laughs> so, I'm, so, I'm so glad you said the word invert because. Nicole had a terrible and yet entirely apt turn of phrase. And I'm going to let you lean into what it and say, say it. That, okay, go, go on, Nicole. So the Fifty Shades um, series <laughs> is as sexy as pulling out a dry tampon. So if you've oh. ever had... <laughs> I hope you're happy. You killed Bolu. Are you happy? <laughs> I'm telling you, like, if you've ever had to pull out a dry tampon, Absolutely. you understand that it is a painful... <laughs> situation it was so bad it's yeah and you know i i first saw jamie dornan um he was in season one of once upon a time the tv sh- series about all the different fairy tales and stuff that's basically like all the disney properties in one one series but he played the huntsman as in from um snow white and the huntsman so he played the huntsman in a season one and he was so he was so striking um, in that and so then I saw him in the fall and I love him in the fall I I think he needs to be like a psychopath in order to be attractive <laughs> and whatever he's trying to do in Fifty Shades is not um, it's completely unsexy he's clearly uncomfortable in the role no, I don't, I don't. And I just find his whole face very very bland like it's obviously very beautiful in the ways that we've been told you know white dudes are beautiful mm-hmm. but I look at him and I just think but there's there's not a lot else there. And I'm sure he's a lovely person who loves his wife and children and his mother. But I just cannot bring anything. There's nothing that, nothing comes forth. I just, I'm, I'm empty. Um, so we've kind of, we've touched on a few people already. But I need to ask you, Bolu, are there any other uh, basic bays of uh, paler, you know, the paler persuasion that you, that we haven't mentioned? Or what's, what's going on there? Because I couldn't help but notice Carrie Bradshaw style. <laughs> I couldn't help but wonder were there yes. other people in Bolu's kind of like basic kind of roller decks who mm. are, you know, mm. not black. I'm generally um a dark liquor girl <laughs> is what I would say if I was like <laughs> in in a rom com and somebody kind of like that is my line. I'm I'm kind of like, you know, cognac, brandy. <laughs> <laughs> you but... are so cheesy and corny. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, yeah, I generally don't. I generally don't crush on white guys. But if I was going to choose um, <laughs> from the classic film Magic Mike, um, <laughs> Channing Tatum. That, you mean the pinnacle of American cinema? The pinnacle of American cinema. <laughs> I get it. I like Channing. I used to fancy him a lot more. And then it slowly kind of just trickled into nothing. It was like the height of like the Magic Mike hype. And then after that, there was kind of like, he kind of faded for me. But I remember being watching Magic Mike double XL and just kind of gripping my cinema, <laughs> my cinema like seat, like, wow, okay. Yes, this is it. yes. I don't know what it is about it. XL him. made And there was like the chainsaw thing him. as well. That was, that was a lot. When he kind of just like <laughs> held a chainsaw between his legs, basically. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was a solid. <laughs> so basic. <laughs> So basic, so good. You can't see Nicole right now, but she's got a finger on her chin and is looking into the middle distance really happily. (laughs) (laughs) I remember that whole routine. I always have that face when I think about Magic Mike Double (laughs) XL. I love that movie. Um, So I think... I think you've really helped us kind of navigate the the waters of uh, Basic River. (laughs) Where can people find you, Bolu, on the internet and other places, please? I am, yeah, I'm always on the internet. That is my home. So on Twitter, B-W-E-B-A-B-S. You can read my short story, Netflix and Chill, on Medium. If you just like Google Netflix and Chill and... My, my name that is such speaking of basic that's a very basic title somebody actually tweeted me that why is everyone writing about sex these days like gosh what's what happened to romance <laughs> anyways <laughs> excellent well thank you again we appreciate you and we appreciate your amazing insights yes thank you for stopping i'm so by. grateful to be here thank you so much <laughs> thank you for having me All right. Do you want to start? No, you start. Oh, cheers. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I got a <laughs> Gee, little. Thanks, Nicole. I got a little. You got a little, little sprinkle. Yeah. All right. Gonna, okay. All right. 
Nicole, have you ever wondered how that perfect song ended up in that unforgettable TV moment? As a matter of fact, I have been. Mm-hmm. I, I know you have. So each week on Showstopper, Spotify's Xavier Jernigan spotlights a TV show or film and explores its unique sounds through interviews with the music supervisors, composers, and talent who create it. Mm. Yeah. So relive the most memorable musical moments with Showstopper, returning Monday, November 27th, exclusively on Spotify. All right. How are you feeling, Bim? Did Bolu convince you that basics are where it's at? <sighs> Let's say she did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I don't. I think Bolu made some really cogent points. I'm mm-hmm. grateful for her point of view, mm-hmm. and for the most part, I'm with it. Even as I reckon, this is the thing, right? As you've yeah. said before, don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Right. There's a pot. There's a, rather there's a lid for every pot. Yeah. And I think there will be some days when certain lids that I have will fit some pots Mm -hmm. but that's still going to be real like I cannot what I consider basic yeah is like a terminal condition (laughs) for the most part (laughs) for the most part I mean Uh you know that's just I I can fancy some basic juice but I feel like I have like an allocated number that I can like stomach Uh. and then the rest of it I'm just kind of like do you know what that's too much even for me I feel you I feel you I get that I get that but now that we've let Bolu explain her attraction for basic men (laughs) We do want to talk about another group of people that we like to call the you thoughts. Mm. The you thoughts are people that, you know, you see, you look at them and you're like, oh, he's probably basic. Yeah, right? at first sight. At first sight. Yeah. But then you actually hear him talk or you get to see something on social media. It's like, yeah. oh, hmm, maybe right. you're not so basic after all. Right. Right. And that happens, you know, for people every single day where right. you have like an opinion that you believe to be like firmly held mm-hmm. and then all it takes is one well-placed kind of counter to that and suddenly mm-hmm. you think oh my god yeah i was wrong right you know and that's you know dudes are the same i'm gonna say they're the brussels sprouts yes bitch the yes brussels sprouts because mm. at first you're kind of like uh, i don't want this this you know funky green vegetable sure, whatever sure. but when you have it properly prepared yes it's on point. So listen, I recently tweeted about this. For me, the king of vegetables is broccoli. Mm. But the second in command, mm-hmm. in terms of the vegetable family, mm-hmm. Brussels sprouts. But you got to know how to prepare them correctly. Exactly. I won't eat any Brussels sprout. Mm-hmm. But I will eat a Brussels sprout that has been made lovingly and with mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. I will mm-hmm. eat the fuck out of that. Yeah. So that's that's what these dudes are. Yeah, the Brussels sprouts. They're well-prepared Brussels sprouts. Who are some of your you thoughts? Sh- straight up? Yeah. Ryan Gosling. Yes. Because I don't fancy blondes. Right. Not Me generally. Either. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. If they're not Paul Newman, I don't want them. I mean, Paul Newman and maybe Charlie Hunnam, but we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get to that. But I feel like Ryan Gosling looks very basic. I wrote uh, an essay about him and his career mm-hmm. um, earlier this year talking about how he, you know, he has a very kind of old fashioned kind of Hollywood star kind of vibe. Right. Yeah. He, he's not out there like thrusting, you know, in the, in the limelight looking for that limelight. You know, he right. lives a very quiet life mm-hmm. with his beautiful partner Eva Mendes they have two little girls Mm -hmm. and you know they live a life away from the spotlight until he's looking to promote yes and I love that I'm like yeah stay at home I don't need to know shit about your interior life because it's not valid it's not it's not relevant to me right but there's something about Ryan Gosling in particular I think he's so clearly in on the joke Mm, yeah I find that wildly attractive he's always smirking at himself yes and then you know when the whole uh, Moonlight Mm. and La La Land debacle happened yes and it was like this quick pan to him, and he was cracking the fuck up. And I just thought, that's Bay. Yeah. Straight away. I also think he's a little nasty. I th- you he know, has that look. He looks like he says, he I, knows I things. can't even say what I really want to say because <laughs> it's just a little too much for the show. But <laughs> I just think that he is, um, he's the type of guy, he's going to put his whole face in your butt. Like, so um, I want to make it very clear um, that I did not say that. I don't necessarily agree or disagree. I couldn't possibly comment. But those are very much Nicole's words. I'm just saying. And, you know, Bim has to remain professional, right? Because she did this amazing profile of his career earlier. So she's trying to she's trying to be professional and nice. But I did not do a profile on Ryan Gosling. And Ryan Gosling... We know. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go into that either. <laughs> That's going to be for another show, I think. All right. I look forward to it. Nicole, tell me one of your you thoughts, one of your Brussels sprouts. Donald Glover. Mm, Donald Glover. Tell me more. Tell yeah. me more. Donald Glover, you know, he's, um, you know, kind of slight. His body is my 
type, right? Uh-huh. Uh, which which, is, which is, is uh slim but wiry and he's a little short ish or what I would consider short. I'm not sure of his height, but um and you know, he's made some cringe worthy comments in yes, his career has. about yes, dating outside has. of his race. I really don't want to go into that cuz this this I mean, again, it's just kind of a lot. Um but his little body does things <laughs> for me. And sometimes um Again, it's just kind of like when the angle is right, the camera angle hits him just mm-hmm. right. He's like, oh, okay. But I also think that he's nasty, too. I think oh. he's a very uh, sensual, freaky kind of lover who gets a- aggressive right when you need him to. Oh, wow. You've given this some I've thoughts. Get, yes, I have. So I are have. we saying that y- what what it hinges on for you is that they be nasty or appear to be nasty? Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, that was so amazing. <laughs> um I yeah, I think these for me the the thing is with these you thoughts our Brussels sprouts is that they have a little nastiness to them uh-huh, underneath uh-huh. it all. And so that's what make changes them from basic to oh, I could entertain you, sir. Yeah. Like I think there's a little heat, a little passion to them. Um that's not always obvious because some of these people are kind of quote unquote nerdy looking right uh-huh, and uh, uh-huh. nerds don't get the benefit of the doubt and I'm here to tell you that nerds are great mm-hmm, freaky mm-hmm. great little nerds geeky yes give them a chance yeah I'm gonna throw somebody else that I know you have a big uh, you know crush on and that's Matt Zucri who was uh-huh. Carrie Argos on The Good Wife yes. R.I.P. R.I.P. The yes. Good Wife he's from Tennessee by the way Is he? shout out Tennessee stand up <laughs> That's, that's part I, of the reason why okay. I love him. I mean, that's fair. But he's someone who, again, a blonde, not here for it. Right. And then I remember the first time I saw him was on Gilmore Girls, where he played Logan Huntsberger, who to this day, if I saw him in the street, I would punch him directly in the gut mm. because he's the worst <laughs> rich white man of all time. And I include Batman in that list. Okay, like, yeah. Logan is a dickhead. Like, mm-hmm. he's the worst person in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I saw Matt Zucri in The Good Wife. Yes. And there was one scene in particular mm. <laughs> where, you know, shortly after, uh, shortly after <laughs> died, listen, it's not a spoiler. It's, it's, it's not, years yeah. old. Yeah. But after that, and, you know, he's got like a client who's being extra demanding. Mm-hmm. And Carrie's kind of taking it, taking it, taking it. And this guy, the client just goes, you know, a little bit nuts. And mm-hmm. Carrie just flips but he flips in the most controlled understated way and his voice goes about two or three octaves deeper mm-hmm. what do you want i want to get out my aggressions and my anger by destroying your client now sit down i said sit the hell down and i was at home watching this and I expressly removed my bra and threw it at the screen. And I was like, take it, it's yours. Yes. Because Matt Zucri's voice yes. is, oh my God. Not to be too on the nose, but that's what we call a whiskey voice. That's what we call, you know. Listen. Oh, yeah. I felt drunk listening to it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know. I didn't even know what whiskey voice was. But I know that I felt intoxicated when he said, and when he said it, I, I just, and he said it in his eyes, he was sitting down and he looked up from his prone like seat mm-hmm. and he just kind of commanded the guy to sit the fuck down. And I at home, after throwing my bra right. at the screen, yeah. I sat the fuck down. I was like, yeah, okay, all, all right, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. Thank you so much for the offer. And then also his character was coded as dating women of color in the yes. show. And like that's pretty much all he dated. That's 80% of the reason why I fancy him. Yeah, so there's like a lot of transference <laughs> happening. So much. You know, Shout but you therapy. know, Matt, <laughs> we got you. Just um, call me, Matt. Just call me. Yeah. Jeez. And one, one more. I don't yeah. know if you feel me on this one, but uh-huh. Ben Schwartz. The gentleman who played Jean Jean Raphael Raphael. Hmm. on Parks and Rec. I think he's cute, but I'm not all the way there. Listen, okay. (laughs) There was a blooper uh, in which he and Retta, who played Donna on Parks and Rec. Can we buy into this club? Step two, we roll over to the club. It's just a blooper scene. You guys can find it. And he says something like, "If I just, what if I just dagger you on the dance floor? I dagger you on that dance floor. <laughs> and, you know, Rudd cracks up. But the f- it's something about the way he said dagger you. Yeah. Naked on the dance floor. You're going to throw up, you're going to smile. So I follow him on all, like, all of his little social media things, right? Uh-huh. And he's constantly listening to R&B music, like old school, well, what's now old school R&B music from the 90s. Uh-huh. And I really think that that's what he 
fucking listens to. So that's like, is that is that is that coded for you that if he listens to R and B, he might could like. Yeah, you? I think he knows how to move to R and B. That's right. that's what I think. All right. Well, listen, those are solid solid reasons. Yeah. And I feel like we've given you a little list. You know, okay. no yeah. first sommelier this week, but listen. If you were thinking these people were basic, please reconsider your position. Right. So we have Ryan Gosling, yep. Donald Glover, mm-hmm. Ben Schwartz, yep. and Matt Zucri. That's right. So give those guys a second glance yeah. or two, and you'll three, find, four. I mean, sevens, eight. Yeah. You'll also find, this is someone who I'm going to mention for my Drabble later, mm-hmm. but Mark Paul Gosseler. Listen. Yes. Yes. Formerly known as Zach. Yes. From uh, Saved by the Bell. Yes. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Stay tuned. Listen to the drabble. Find out. Well, Bim, it's about that time for yeah. us to get into one of my favorite segments of oh, the show. It's one of your faves? Yes. It might be... M- the favorite. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm so pleased because I am, obviously, as you know, a lifelong fanfic reader. Yes. I, I consume it like people consume air. I fucking love <laughs> fanfic. So I'm very pleased to hear you say that you love this um, this segment because yeah. I love it too. Good. That pleases me. All right. So what we're <laughs> going to do, we're going to get into our drabbles, our fanfic yeah. uh, for this episode, yeah. which, you know, our basics, the people that we love, even though... Maybe it's not a lot to love beyond the physical. But also the people that we love because we found a way or they found a way to overcome their basic. Yes. You know what I mean? Right. And there's nothing wrong with being basic. Let's just reiterate that. Yes. There's nothing wrong with being basic. Sometimes you just need life to be uncomplicated. That's it. And stand in your truth. If you are basic, yeah. you drink your pumpkin spice latte. Yeah. Right. It's just, you know. That's your right. So we're going to get started with our drabbles. Um, Shall I go first? I would love for you to go first. Okay. (laughs) I chose Donald Glover as the subject. Is it subject or object? The object. The object. The first object. The first object of my drabble. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why I I cleared my throat like that. I think you know why you did that. I think you know. Donald Glover, the only Donald will allow. Donald is sitting on the couch, staring into space. He's raked his hands through his fro so much I can map the finger grooves in his hair. He looks at me in the doorway, eyes pained. Whatever he's working on isn't moving from his brain to the page. He doesn't need to say anything. I walk to him and straddle him, cradle his head against my chest. He presses his nose into my neck and inhales. He smells like coffee, cigarettes, blunts, and weekend staleness. I push my fingers into his hair, covering the tracks of his worry. We begin to rock back and forth slowly, holding each other. I want him to take what he needs. I want to replenish him. When he moves his hands up my back and grabs the back of my neck, I know his needs have changed. I lean my head back and let him drink his fill. Is it? Is it? Bim! <laughs> what is the meaning of all this? Okay, okay, all right. Your shiny suit, all right. And you're telling me it is. Yes, it's quite nice. Thank you. <laughs> it is quite nice. Thanks so much for asking. Yes. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, mine is considerably tamer. Um, But you know what? It's Mm. fine because... It's okay. We are different people. That's very true. That's that's very true. So mine is about someone who I think was basic for the bulk of his life. Mm. God bless him. Mm -hmm. Mostly because of, I think, the shape that he was... Or rather, the mold that he was pushed into. And he kind of embraced it. Mm. Um, And, you know, at the time, I was a child. So, of course... What I was looking for was basic. Right. No one was looking to get threatened. When I was a child, I liked childish things. Listen, come through with yeah. that verse. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And then childish things end. Yes, exactly. Uh, and his basicness sort of like after plateauing for a while, it suddenly bloomed into something magnificent. So okay. I'm intrigued. Okay. So today's first object is a is an actor by the name of Mark Paul Gusselaar. <laughs> Okay, yes, come on. (laughs) Listen, 
I stand in my truth. I choose yes, my choice. I, no judgment. Thank you. I appreciate the no judgment. <clears throat> so here goes. I bumped into him again about three weeks ago, coming out of my usual salon after a fresh haircut. I'd heard my name, and when I turned, a man I did not recognize had his hand in mid-air. He'd said my name hesitantly, so it started and ended on a question. It took me a moment or two to place him, and when I did, my eyes widened. He ducked his head bashfully before looking back up through his lashes. Mark Paul? I asked. Oh my God, hi! He'd grown a beard, and his hair was no longer the fine corn silk yellow I remembered from childhood. Now it was much darker and thicker and looked almost wiry. Ugh, oh, and his beard. It gave him the look of an off-duty lumberjack, but one who was a whiz at making blueberry pancakes and carrying on ruly children through a backyard in the summertime. I haven't seen you in ages. There was no trace of the somewhat goofy teen I'd known, and in his stead was this... This man. I was staring. I didn't even care. He saw me staring and ran his hands over his beard. Good Lord. Anyway, we're going to a baseball game next week. Yeah, see, I didn't see it for Mark Paul. I, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Saved by the Bell and all that kind of stuff. But sure. pitch. Pitch. That's Man. what this whole drabble is yes. based on. Because I watched that one sadly solo season <sighs> of Pitch. And when he turned up, I was like, wait, I think I recognize him, but I don't. Right. And then I went on the internet and I searched and it was him. And I just felt my stomach kind of fall away. Listen. Oof. That he, beard. That beard hey. did so much. And he got a little thick. Yes. Not a little. <laughs> a lot. I wanted to climb his back like a mountain range. Just a good back. He responded to me on Twitter <gasps> when I asked him. Because it was like after Pitch had gone off the air oh. and everybody was trying to figure out, is it coming back or what? Yeah. And so I was just like, how long is it going to take you to grow back that daddy beard? And he, <laughs> he, I literally said daddy. I don't remember the exact word, like how the syntax was, you know, put together. Uh -huh. But I know I called him daddy, you know, whatever. <laughs> and he responded just real smooth, like, oh, about three months. Oh, like, is oh, it? Okay. <laughs> I see you. I he, love he him. He knows what he was doing. I think he knows exactly what he was doing, and I appreciate that mm -hmm. because I don't need none of that fake nonsense. Like, listen, you grow a beard like that. You right. know what you're trying to do. And I was very grateful for it. So I tuned in, you know, every week on Fox before they canceled it, mm -hmm. the fuckers. If you're listening out there, Fox commissioning people, just bring back pitch, for God's just sake. Somebody bring back pitch. Stop playing. Somebody. Also, Mark Paul, if you want to come on the show and talk to us about how you glow up from... Already, you know, your average American, you know, whatever, cute boy. whatever, yeah. to fucking daddy. <laughs> I like, you know, as the kids say, zaddy. Do yeah. they, they still say zaddy? Some of the kids do. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> we need to have him on the show. So, Just Mark Paul, if you're listening, come through. Come through. Let us ask you what kind of, how do you do like a double glow up? Yeah. What, what's that all about? And also, what products are you using on your beard? Sure. Right. It just looks, it just looks strong. It looks like you could just. <laughs> His beard looks strong. It, okay. looks like, <laughs> it looks like you could tug it and it'd be fine. Mm. It's a good beard. Oh, what, are, what are we tugging it for? For, for? for the for the sensation beneath our fingertips. Anyway. Mm. Um, so okay. that was, <laughs> that was Dravels. <laughs> we could go on and on about Mark Paul's beard. I mean, I could. And, and everything but um let us know which drabble you liked yes on twitter um and that is at thirst aid kit yes please we, we always love hearing uh from you and more importantly after you tell us which one you preferred or you know maybe you like them both equally because you're a lovely person and you love all your ch you love all your co-hosts mm -hmm. uh equally that's lovely but please send us your own uh fanfic uh, i love reading fanfic uh, and if it's coming from you after you've been inspired by something you heard from the studio today then please please send us in uh literally one paragraph maybe two just a little something to whet the appetite, right. please do so. And you can send them to us via email at thirstaidkit at buzzfeed.com. We would also not be averse to getting it via 280 characters on Twitter. We've received so many drabbles already and they're all incredible. But I'd like to read one really quickly by a listener named Nikki about Keanu. <sighs> Keanu had just discovered homemade blender margaritas. So when he invited me over to his hot tub, it was with childish glee he suggested we make some. 
While he squinted at measuring cups, pouring out tequila and Cointreau, I was put on lime-squeezing duty. Once his job was done, he sidled up behind me, his enormous hands around my waist, thumbs pressing into the small of my back. And if you want the rest, you'll have to check out our Tumblr, <laughs> thirstaidkitpodcast.tumblr.com. Yes, 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 yes. What I love is when the uh, listeners send in their travels mm-hmm. and you can tell they've been listening so closely because they make a point to include stuff that we've mentioned. Yes. So I love the detail about Keanu's enormous hands. Yes. <laughs> and his thumbs pressing into that. I love it. I love, oh gosh, I love all travels. I love that travel in particular. Whew. Thank Thanks. you, Nikki. Thank that you, was, Nikki. <laughs> yeah. First Aid Kit is produced by Eleanor Kagan, Julia Furlan, and Agaranesh Ashagre with additional editing by Meg Kramer. Our music is by Tanya Morgan, and you can find us on Twitter at TN Whiskey Woman. That's TN Whiskey with an E Woman and Bimadu B I M A D E W. And thank you so much for listening. If you liked what you heard, please head to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show. It helps other people discover us. And we always just like seeing what you have to say. And of course, we always love to hear what people think of the show and of the season so far. Um, Remember, you can send us some feedback, positive please, uh, at thirstaidkit at buzzfeed.com. Our Twitter is Thirst Eight Kit, and our Tumblr is Thirst Eight Kit Podcast Tumblr.com. Remember, you can always find a lot of the other show stuff all on the Tumblr. We're, we're uploading our drabbles. We're putting some of the fan drabbles on there, uh, and you can ask us anything on there as well. Don't forget that you can actually interact with us on Tumblr also as well. In addition, <laughs> and I wanted to say really quickly, I recently had a kind of disturbing event happen in my life and you know sometimes men in real life are shit <laughs> sorry I, <laughs> that I was, mean that's just <laughs> that was me agreeing I mean, I mean you know you gotta laugh to keep from crying right. um, but Thursday Kit lets me remember all the good stuff about men and fantasize about the even better mm, amen. so I want to thank all of our listeners and supporters and our production crew here Woo-hoo. because Y'all are saving me from becoming a fire-breathing succubus out to destroy all men. Amen. Amen. Although sometimes, you know, succubi are cool. You can just, you know, lean into that succubus (laughs) persona. I like like the (laughs) idea of being a succubus. I do. I do. This is just a quick PSA that has nothing to do with what I just talked about, but we wanted to make sure we tell our listeners this. Um, But we've had quite a few messages indicating people are having some accidents and near accidents while they're listening to the show. I mean, I'm laughing, but I am quietly distressed. Guys, (laughs) please don't die. (laughs) Please listen safely. Wear your headphones at work. If you're listening to us while you're driving, you know, focus on the road. Yeah. (laughs) Turn off off the Bluetooth so we don't scandalize any passing nuns. You know, the usual (laughs) stuff. Guys, please be safe. No, honestly, though, please be safe. (laughs) Yes. We love you. Stay tuned and stay thirsty.